brands interact with the customers using social media so if we do analyze how uh, how the customers are interacting with the content we are sharing we can better base our business decisions so we have this technical architecture where we are in basically building a crawler out and this technical architecture is what was developed in uh, one of our engagements with one of our clients so the client itself it's a social media analytics company they, they do social media analytics analytics for a living and we built this crawling engine for them uh, like just said and same said where we ingest social media content from whole variety of different social media platforms like it, you can see on the left hand side youtube twitter linkedin facebook instagram twitch that we, we did a bunch of them uh, and then uh, the idea was can we find hidden patterns in that and then can we find out what people are talking about when they are looking at a particular content we had these available entities from various apis that like youtube and facebook and insta so if you focus here on the raw youtube comments so this provided us with youtube comments of a particular video and we had all of that extracted so we have the data now how do we extract stuff out of this so to start with any any ml project we need to do basic steps how we would analyze that data so first step is to extract that data second step is to do some cleaning on the data to find out only the relevant data third step is to do some exploratory analysis and fourth is to do actually the ml model on that so so that we can use the results to uh, business decisions and while actually so just give you a context about this we had this video right uh, how i bought a tesla for 78 dollars per month this this youtuber gram stefan is a personal finance enthusiast he bought a tesla 30000 dollar car it's more than 30000 but that's the base price and then he showed his calculation how after tax saving and uh, tax rebates and tax credits and, and some more of, uh, savings uh, how he was able to uh, you know get the tesla only at an emi of 78 dollars a month for the first year so while we analyze this that we quickly realized that the majority of people engaging with such content usually have polarizing opinions and uh, they will have a few set of opinions so we can directly try to cluster these so just backtracking a bit so we have machine learning algorithms here and there are supervised and unsupervised learning algorithms so in supervised learning algorithms we usually tell the system what we're trying to predict something like that so uh, i can have a data set of cats and dogs and i am telling the machine learning model that if you see this sort of an image label that thing as if i see a cat image label that as a cat if i see a dog image label that as a dog otherwise in an unsupervised learning algorithm the algorithm will try to cluster i'll just say okay you have this data set on your own try to find some patterns in the data and try to cluster them so it's more like i give it the entire data set of footballs and basketballs and baseballs and it sees a pattern and it automatically classifies it so that's a bit about clustering so how do we do clustering on words so words are not obviously machine interpretable machines understand numbers and vectors so we convert words into vectors of numbers and how do we do that there are various algorithms already out of the box something like word to vec which will plot each word into a vector space and i can visualize that as a 3d on on the top you can see so really interesting things come out of this so i have something plotted out as a man here and a woman here so something missing here is king so i can really do vector mathematics on this so if i do king plus woman minus man i'll get to queen so some some really interesting things get start to uh, appear if then we try to create vectors so we tried clustering on word to vec and try to cluster vector, uh, vectors based on words but we thought why to stop there right we already have sentences that are segmented so why don't we plot out the sentence itself so we have universal sentence encoder thanks to google and tensorflow 
and the ongoing research on it. So it, what it will do it instead of converting a single word into a vector, it will convert the whole sentence into a vector. So yeah, we did clustering on, now we have vectorized sentences and vectorized comments. Now we do clustering on that. Okay, great. And how do you know which cluster says what? Uh, how do you make sense of those clusters? Yeah, so uh, the, to make sense of these clusters, uh, this is where topic modeling comes in. So topic modeling refers to the task of identifying topics that best describe that uh, text data or document. So where topic models are been around, built around the idea that the meaning of a document or meaning of a text is actually uh, being governed by some hidden variables which we are not observing. So there are various techniques, various algorithms that do this. And the most famous and most prominent out of them is LDA. So LDA, is, LDA stands for latent Dirichlet allocation, nothing special, just a fancy word. So to tell briefly about LDA, so it imagines a fixed set of topics. Each topic would represent a set of words and the goal of LDA is to map all the documents to the topics in a way such that words in each document are mostly captured by those imaginary topics. So we did topic modeling on the comments from video, which we get, and we got these topics which are shown in this slide. So we did this line and we, we said that these set of comments belong to the same cluster and these set of comments belong to the same cluster. So we did clustering and then Within each cluster, we modeled, uh, we did topic modeling and we said this cluster is start talking about these words, but then now let's go further deeper and then can you explain how do I make sense of these words like Doug, like Graham, yes, mm -hmm. get Durumo, how do I make sense of these topics? So if you are a human and uh, I mean it's pretty pretty apparent to some of us that if we look at this topic for cluster three it's saying video clickbait clickbait watch title get like make youtube so some sort of a sentence a human can generate out of it right that this video was generated as a clickbait for making money on youtube something like that that you know graham stephen is a fraud supposedly so that's exactly coming from the clusters. So what we did to go beyond this and to make it human readable, we did summarization on each cluster, each single cluster of multiple comments, and we summarize that. So there are two types of summarization techniques that we use, and abstractive summarization and extractive summarization. So just as a quick difference between them, extractive summarization might pull up some sentences between uh, from the initial corpus that we have on the left. And abstractive summarization will look at all of the text and then generate a summary out of it. So we did abstractive summarization on this. And we, I mean, the power of neural networks and I don't know, the magic that they bring into stuff. Uh, we had really, really surprising summaries that I'm going to show you guys. And here it is. So, so summary for topic that the one, the clickbait one. So it's saying that Bob Green is saying the clickbait title makes me sick. So he says video has no point other than to show how good your camera and audio equipment is. So yeah, there's a humor part to this as well. And some other topics are talking about tax and stuff. So tax write-offs are not worth the full value. So whatever calculation he's doing, people are trying to say those things in the comments and this, all of this is machine generated. For if you look at topic four, so at the end of the video, his dad comes up and he shows off the car that he bought to his dad. And I mean, a lot of people, like if you just scroll down through the comments, there are like, Five, uh, I mean, 2,500 people commented that they loved the dad's reaction. And this is in the summary for the cluster four that he seemed like the coolest dad ever. He was genuinely excited for you and his reaction was priceless. So just as a more visual understanding for this, we plotted all of the comments out into a 3D space. So it's not going to make much sense right now but if I try to cluster them in real time. So this is becoming really beautiful.
Yeah, so not only can you see the summaries, you can actually go back and see what the real comments were for that particular cluster. Right, right, right. And if I try to go to the one that I just showed, like the summary for topic four, I can just type four here. It will isolate that topic for me. So for everyone, right, uh, we started with a video. We got all the comments, we clustered on the comments, we did topic modeling, and then we did summarization. This, this gives us the top five things that YouTube is telling Graham Stephan about this video, right? So the A, this is useful for all the influencers so that they get feedback. They get hundreds of thousands of comments on some of their larger videos. How do they make sense of it? This is how they make sense of it. It is also useful for us when we are engaging in the field with different kind of customers. So for example, if it is a CCAI engagement and if we are, if a company wants to create chatbots, but then they want to know what do I create a chatbot on? So they might have call transcripts from the thousands of calls that they've had uh, with human agents. We can do the same topic modeling summarization on that and identify what exactly is that the customers are asking when they're creating chatbots or when uh, the same thing applies to social media, the same thing applies to e-commerce uh, reviews and, and things like that. So this uh, topic modeling and uh, summarization and clustering, uh, very, very powerful uh, stuff that you've shown here at JXMA.